What's up guys, it's your boy Zawolki, back out with another of the Chris Watts videos. Now, we know that Chris was obviously doing a lot of sketchy stuff when it came to the crime the morning of um, him coming back from work and, and talking with the police officers and Nicole Atkinson being there. And there's a lot of things that were going on in that house when he went in there he took forever to go from the, the garage door into the front door to let the police officers in. He touched the Lexus. He was fondling weirdly in there. He went down in the basement while the police officers were kind of not looking. And there's a lot when it comes to him and his first appearance back to the house. What was he doing? Could he be, have been tampering with things, evidence, and um, putting cops on a wild goose chase on certain things that he was planting in there? We're going to be taking a look at it right now with the video from Crazy Crime Trick. Um, definitely go over to her channel, give her some love, do the thing, subscribe, comment, like, and share. But before we go any further, make sure you guys are subscribed by my channel by hitting that white bar icon down the bottom right. Hit that bell icon next to it. So when I do post videos like this one, you guys will get that little ring notification that I've posted that video. Then you guys can watch, comment, like, and share. And with that being said, I want to get into this because this is stating was Chris Watts tampering with evidence I think he was tampering with evidence. He was planning evidence because he knew at the first, what I think was going to happen is that everybody was going to take it with a grain of salt that Shanann Watts went on a play date with her girls and miraculously went and disappeared. And the cops were supposed to believe this. And oh my gosh, she's missing. Where do we got to look? Normally, they look at the spouse, so they didn't think that through, but they, when I say they, I did still do believe wholeheartedly that somebody was else was involved with uh, Chris Watts, but they thought they were going to get away with this. They were going to plan everything out. The murders happened. He was going to go to work. She was going to go to, a, or Shannon was going to go to a play date um, with somebody, which his planning sucked, um, and he was going to have time to come home dispose of things, take care of things, put things away, move this there, that there, and then make it look like something happened in this house. And Chris, he was at work the entire time when they were taken. That's what was going to happen. I, I still have my theories, but with that being said, <coughs> I want to get into this and see what crazy crime chick has for us. So with that being said, and without further ado, let's get into the video. Welcome back to my channel. If this is going to be the first video you are going to watch, I hope you do stick around. We do talk about the Chris Watts murders, anything old and anything new. So if this is a case that you just can't let go or something just doesn't seem right, this is the place to be. So I hope you do hit that subscribe button. And to my returning subs, you know I adore you. So we're going to be looking at the discovery today. I want us to look at the reports for the surveillance that was done on Chris Watts on August 14th. So this was the Tuesday, day the day after the murders. Oh, so this is when the police were watching him nonstop? Okay. And of course, at this time, Shanann and the girls were only missing. There were about five different cars that were watching Chris. And I'm not going to go through every single report because they pretty much say the same thing. So this first report was done by Nathaniel McManus. Sorry, and it says, on August 14th, 2018, Longmount Police responded to a request for assistance by Frederick P.D. On August 14th, 2018, at approximately 1,500 hours, so that would have been 3 p.m., 
Sergeant Harper, currently assigned to the Longmont Police Department Special Enforcement Unit, received a call from Sergeant Egan of the Frederick PD to assist with the missing person possibly homicide investigation. They already knew. Advised that a female subject and her two children, so Shanann, Bella, and Cece, were reported missing, and then it gives their address. He further advised that the circumstances of the incident were suspicious in nature. He requested the assistance of LPD SEU for surveillance of operations of the male subject identified as the female's husband. So again, they're reaching out to Longmont for yeah, surveillance on Chris Watts. SEU was advised that the male subject was last observed at the residence loading items into a white Lexus SUV bearing state of Colorado and it gives a license plate number. So we have Chris on August 14th, roughly around 3 p.m. He is seen by the officer surveillancing him coming out of the residence and putting something inside the Lexus trunk. Right here, it says that um, Egan received information that a uniformed officer in the neighborhood observed Chris packing up what appeared to be blankets and a cooler inside the white Lexus while it was in the garage. He also said that afterwards, Chris shut the garage and a vehicle pulled up, it gives the license plate number, and it said that there was a male and female that got out of that vehicle. So the next names, these are going to be the five that were surveillancing Chris Watts on August 14th. So we have Sergeant Harper, Detective McManus, Detective Pollock, Officer Ownby, and Officer Townsend. It says that they responded to the area and observed a white Lexus SUV parked in front of the residence. Again, male and female were observed sitting on the steps of the front porch. We also know that was Nick and Amanda. It was later determined that these were associates of the male subject. And Sometime female. around 6.30, Officer Ownby observed the male suspect who had been identified as Christopher Lee Watts exit the garage of the resident in the white Lexus SUV, so again in Shanann's car, he exited the driveway eastbound out of sight for a few moments. Surveillance units then observed him stopped at a brown Ford pickup that appeared to be a fleet truck. truck for an oil company based on its marking and description. So we know that that is Chris's truck and it was parked away from the house. Yep. This vehicle was identified as belonging to Watts as a business-owned vehicle for Anadarko Oil Services. It was identified by the state, and then it just goes on and gives the license plate information. Chris was at his truck for several minutes with the rear hatch of the Lexus open and the doors of the truck also open. He then departed but immediately returned to the truck for a few more moments. So he's there at his truck, obviously getting something out of it and putting it in the trunk of the Lexus. He leaves and then immediately comes back. And we know that Nicole Kessinger is the one who told Chris to park his truck down the street. She said she told him because if Shanann didn't see his truck there, then she would be more willing to come home. Sneaky and I think that is BS. I think she told him to park the truck away from the house because she knew that day the search dogs were coming. Then it says, he departed the neighborhood traveling directly to I-25 southbound. Surveillance units kept him in sight as he continued south to 136th Avenue, where he turned eastbound. He then turned north on Washington Street. He traveled to Highway 7 and turned east. Detective Steele arrived to assist with surveillance around this time. He then flipped a U-turn and traveled west back to I-25 northbound. He got off at Highway 52, traveling east and ultimately traveling to Frederick PD, where he had been requested for an interview with detectives. So we do know that he interviewed with um, Coder that night. So after he ultimately was parked by his work truck and getting something out of there and putting it in the Lexus, he was headed somewhere. And... Is it possible he was going to Nick and Amanda's at that time? Or did he tell Nick and Amanda, I'll meet up with you, and he was possibly going somewhere else? I think it's interesting the direction he was going is also the same as if he was going towards the mistress's house. But again, who knows where he was going? Because 
he end up getting a phone call and he does a U-turn and he goes straight to Bedrick PD. So we really don't know where he was really headed to. And I'm not the only one who thought he was possibly going to go to the mistress house because it. it says right here, after the interview was completed, Sergeant Egan advised that he believed Watts would travel to and it gives the mistress apartment um, address. And again, she no longer lives there, so I'm not going to black it out. Then it says that Watts was observed leaving the police department following a blue sedan, which came back to the register. Same register owners as a couple originally seen driving the other white Lexus SUV. So that would have been Nick and Amanda. Okay. Both vehicles drove directly to and they went to Nick and Amanda's house. And it says Watts was observed entering the garage at this location. The blue sedan was parked in the garage and next to the white Lexus SUV observed in front of Watts residence at the beginning of their surveillance operation. So this other Lexus that was seen at Chris's residence and now is seen inside Nick and Amanda's garage is obviously okay. their vehicle. Also, Amanda worked for Thrive and she also earned her Lexus auto bonus. So now we're going to look at Sean Harper's report. I'm not going to read all of it again because it's pretty much the same information almost that the other two had said. Um, something that um, he does say that is different though is that when Chris went to his work truck in the white Lexus that he was at this vehicle for several minutes with the rear hatch of the Lexus open and the doors of the truck also open. It appeared Lexus as man. though he was moving back and forth between both vehicles. He then departed, but immediately returned to the truck for a few more moments. So very interesting that Chris goes to the truck and he's seen moving back and forth between the two cars. So that tells us that he obviously is taking stuff from his work truck out and putting it into the Lexus. So I think Chris was taking evidence out of his work truck and putting it in the Lexus. And I also think it's very interesting that all of these reports from the people that were doing surveillance on Chris, they said that once he got to Nick and Amanda's house, Shortly after that, they figured he was going to stay there for the night. So all surveillance was called off. And they all had thought that Chris was going to go to the mistress apartment after he was done with the interview with Coder on the 14th oh, yeah, that night. To. So they sent one agent out to where the mistress lived and sat out there and waited for Chris to arrive. But because Chris ended up going they to Nick and you. Amanda's, they figured he wasn't going to end up going over there after all, so they even called off their surveillance from the mistress. What? I am really shocked that they did not watch Chris for the full night on the 14th. In their own words, this was a possible homicide, so I'm not sure why they wouldn't surveillance him or even the mistress. Something else I thought was interesting that from Nick and Amanda's house to the mistress apartment, it was only six minute distance. And unfortunately, what? since nobody was keeping an eye on Chris so or the there. mistress, is it possible that he went to her house that night to get rid of some evidence? He could have easily snuck out when Nick and Amanda fell asleep. Or you can believe what Chris said he did that evening, that he had pizza and he went and lay down. Looking at the mistress phone bill, we know that she says she didn't, she stopped talking to Chris on the 14th in the morning hours. Um, and per her phone bill, her last phone call with Chris was at 2.07 a.m. on the 14th. Oddly, for the 14th, her last phone call was at 2.20 p.m. and it was with her friend Jim for three minutes. And I say oddly because the mistress talks a lot and she has a lot of phone calls throughout the day. So I'm surprised to see the 14th, you know, the day after Chris's family is missing and all this stuff, that she has no phone calls after 2.20 p.m. Makes me wonder if she was possibly Switch using friends. a different phone. I mean, she has no phone calls after 2 p.m., not even to friends or family. Just looking at the 15th alone, she has phone calls all the way every hour pretty much Holy down crap, to 8.30 p.m. 
And a reason why I think Chris got rid of evidence that night is because whatever happened to the blankets and the cooler that Chris was seen with loading into the Lexus trunk. When he was getting his dad. Also something to think about is that remember the next morning Chris had to go pick up his dad from the airport and he had to go meet up for the polygraph test at 11. So when Chris ends up failing the polygraph and they take him away, Ronnie's left there at the station and they take him to the, the Lexus. And I've watched this video so many times because Ronnie goes in the trunk of the Lexus and he takes his duffel bag out. And I've watched that to see what was left in the trunk because I would like to know what happened to the blankets and the cooler right, yeah, that the Chris was seen putting there? in the Lexus. No, I had to go back to the yeah, report of the items that were recovered. Nowhere on that list was there a cooler or even blankets. And I don't believe that Chris would have left that at Nick and Amanda's house, knowing he or, wouldn't be going back there because he was okay. picking up his oh. dad. And I highly doubt he was gonna have his dad spend the night over there at Nick and Amanda's when Chris has his own house. So I believe Chris would have took those items with him and they should have been in the Lexus, but they weren't. So what happened to them? And we don't even know what was in that cooler. It could have been some type of evidence. It could have been the oxy pills. We really don't know. There's when I look at the too. report, what was in the Lexus, this is what it says. Interior of the vehicle, it said it was clean and uncluttered. Um, the rear seat passenger area, there was two car seats and they were secured in place. There was also the girls' clothing and shoes. They were on the floor along with some toys and a stuffed animal. In the rear cargo area of the vehicle, so the trunk, were numerous zippered empty duffel style bags. Also located in the cargo area were several items of men's clothing, and then it documents what clothing it was. It was a shirt, socks, underwear, jeans, and a belt. Also newer brown leather boots. Then it says medical paperwork was also recovered, as well as paperwork collected from the front center council, identifying works. dates and times of travel from Denver International Airport. Hmm, so I wonder if that might have been possibly her plane ticket information. Mm -hmm. But nowhere on this report is the blanket or the cooler that Chris originally was seen taking and putting in the Lexus. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think Chris was tampering with evidence? Oh, I personally think he was taking he stuff out of that work truck and putting it in the Lexus and was going to get rid of it. Let me know what you guys think about this cooler and the blankets. What happened to them? Where did they go? And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit longer than normal, so I really do hope you guys take the time to hit that like button and it. share it. It's just a free way. You can show your love and support for me, and it does help my channel grow. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys all soon. Bye. It's definitely something to look at. Uh, definitely, he's been messing with uh, Shanann's phone, the rings, the purse that's in the kitchen that people want to sit there and blame Nicole Kent or Nicole Atkinson, which I think is horribly stupid. Um, but definitely the Lexus is a, something of concern because when he came back from work, when they asked him to come there, he went straight, he opened up the garage, went straight to the Lexus, opening it up, grabbing some items and looking for things. What are you looking for? You're, they're literally telling you your wife and kids are missing. And you're like, oh, let me go check my Lexus. So, could there be something? Could it be nothing? Let me know down in the comments. You guys would be, it would be fantastic for you guys to um, subscribe, comment, like, and share. You guys know the deal. Plus, I love the comments. I love reading them and loving, enjoying uh, debating and so forth. What might be and what could be and what maybe never even happened. I would like you guys to tell me down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe uh, again because it's free. It's easy and it, it definitely helps out the channel. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. So please take care, be safe, and as always, keep nerding on, and we'll see you guys in the next one.